Com. Yeah, the villain monologue is stupendously boring. It's satanic without being too satanic for TV. It's scary without being too scary for TV. And it's vague because the thing he wants hasn't been revealed in the plot yet. Right. So he's just like, I want to do the hokey pokey and turn my and turn yourself around and t- <laughs> let, let me finish. Don't do that. Stop. It's like an actor's in a fight with a producer and he's doing like an angry table read of a bad guy speech, but that's what we watch. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because we live in a deterministic universe and there's nothing we can do about it. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend, Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Thanks, Noah. COVID is better than this movie. Having COVID is better (laughs) than the movie we watched. Yeah, yeah. And yes, by the way, listeners, we offered to let him have the day off. He refused because he loves you and this movie too much. And sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I actually got a little bit of a baby cold going, so I'm going to take this one off. Shut the fuck up. (laughs) (laughs) It's been cold out. I got the sniffles. I got a little just, you know when you just like "Mm," feel icky? Yeah, mm -hmm, I do. So (laughs) tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? We watched... Turbulence 3, Heavy Metal. So, you know, I didn't see the first two, but I did what I could. (laughs) It's the story of Satan hiring a really bad SEO team to get more web traffic. It is. I think that's the story. Yeah, Yeah. no, you're right. And Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you loved Air Force One, but you wish it starred your grandma's idea of Marilyn Manson, (laughs) you will love this movie. It's a die hardcore. Hard rock. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So like, yeah, exactly. If you're not all caught up on the um, early entries into the turbulence verse, don't worry. It's apparently it's a vignette style of film. I don't I don't know, but it doesn't fucking matter. Did the first one come out in theaters at least? This was TV, right? <laughs> this was made for TV, yes. Wow. The first one was the theater one. I think they had real actors in that. There's a couple real actors in this one, too. Weird. Yeah. 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 If, if you aren't caught up on this movie, it doesn't matter, right? You, it was written well, for true. you to turn it on at any point on TBS while you're sick. That's what this yep. movie was written for. Yeah. Hey, I did oh. that except Tubi instead of TBS. That's fun. Right, right. There, yeah, there yeah. you go. Technology's caught up with this film. Finally. Now your computer and you have a virus. <laughs> <laughs> so is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah, I'm going to go with best worst hostage negotiation. So <laughs> the movie, <laughs> the movie does a hostage thing and the movie forgot that the bad guy would need to, you know, have demands. And instead mm-hmm. of like realizing that and then writing it in for that scene, <laughs> We watched the bad guy try to improvise an answer, just being like, what do I want? And then they just move on and they never address it. And there's no negotiation mattering. There's like three scenes of that. Yeah. Right. We go back to that over and over again in the movie. It's bizarre. Yeah. If this movie was a comedy and the guy who was the negotiator like has to work off the manual for hostage negotiation and we're intercutting him like frantically flipping through pages. These sequences make sense. Otherwise they're fucking insane. Yeah. Well, that's the thing too. It's not just the guy. It's not just a terrorist who's terrible at this shit. Yeah. So, okay. I'm going to go with best worst computer screens. Oh, all right. So I feel like 2001, which is when this movie came out real high watermark of vaguely aware of what computer screens look like, but not aware <laughs> enough for it to stop being silly. Yeah. Right. Cause like before that you it's just had so very silly, right. You just had like, you know, <laughs> weird cartoons or some shit that was drawn in later or something. It was nonsense what they used to put on computer screens or there'd be somebody programming, but it would all be in binary. Yeah. <laughs> 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 The hacker with a keyboard that's just a zero and a one, just a giant. Just tapping away. 
But by 2001, like everybody, like half the country was online at that point and all this shit. So like people knew kind of basically what computer screens look like. So they sort of tried, but they they didn't really get it quite yet. And this movie has several just chef's kiss examples of that. Oh, especially when they get to the hacking part. It's yes. Yes. Oh, yes. fucking dumb. There's a lot of your dad ducking into the computer room to see like you playing Doom over your shoulder to be like, all right, that's what computer screens <laughs> look yeah, like. Exactly, exactly. And I'm going to go with best worst Australian release date. As Noah mentioned, <laughs> this movie was released in 2001. <gasps> and while it's true, no. this movie was released in the U.S. on TV in May of 2001. It was released in Australian theaters on September 12th oh, of 2001. No. Yikes. Ooh. Feels like someone really dropped the ball on this yeah. one, huh? Yeah. Or they were like, this is so fucking good, we have to push through. We're doing How it. How topical. We're How sticking topical with Turbulence 3. They would want us. They would want us to celebrate their beautiful <laughs> Turbulence series. <laughs> this is what the terrorists want to cancel Turbulence 3. You know what? Heavy metal. Let's roll. <laughs> it's all right. Well, well, let's let's oh god, let's do the hustle. I believe is the term you're looking for. Yeah. Oh my god, yes. All right. Well, so my seatbelt isn't buckled, and my personal electronics aren't set to airplane mode. So I need a minute before this thing takes off. But we're back in a flash with all the dawdling action of Turbulence Three, Heavy Metal. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Okay, ready? Yeah. All right, go for it. All right. So the thing you need to understand about Black Lives Matter. Nice. Hey, Heath, did you just, um, did I just see you catapult Eli out of the window? <laughs> I did, yeah. Did, did he say whomst again? No, 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 no. We were working on our newest invention, the holiday stress be gone. It looks like an ordinary dining room table, but when a family member starts to say something dumb, then boom, right out through the window. I see. And, and what if people can't afford the holiday stress be gone? Any recommendations for how they might deal with holiday conflicts? I mean, they could try BetterHelp. Uh, what's BetterHelp? Seriously? Uh, yeah, I landed on Lucinda's car, cushioned my landing, so I could get back. Great, great. So as the world's largest therapy service, BetterHelp has matched 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% online. Plus, it's affordable. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist. If things aren't clicking, you can easily switch to a new therapist anytime. It couldn't be simpler. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash awful. That's betterhelp.com slash awful. Better help, because not everyone can afford a holiday stress be gone. Financially. Well, or legally. Or legally, Yes. You have broken glass in your hair. Yeah. Like a lot. Mm -hmm. That was the part that cushioned the fall? Most of it. Hey, podcast listener. Do you like podcasts? Do you like being in rooms full of people? Okay, but are you willing to put up with rooms full of people to see live podcasts? Then you're going to love God Awful Movies live in Seattle, March 18th at the Broadway Performance Hall. Get your platinum and VIP tickets at God Awful Movies uh, Live. Uh, live show voiceover guy. Oh, hey, Heath, what's up? How's your COVID? Um, yeah, I I'm okay. So we're out of VIP and platinum tickets. They sold out like two hours after we released them. Oh, I thought... Eli bought a bigger theater this time. No, he did. He, he uh, doubled the size, actually, but it, it still sold out. Damn. O okay. Are there general admission tickets? I mean, we're recording this on Friday and we've sold 84 tickets. So by the time people hear this, uh, hopefully, I guess. Yeah, that's, that's one day. So yeah, hopefully. Yeah. Damn. Well, you heard them, folks. Run, don't walk to buy your tickets at godawfulmovieslive.com because apparently we need to start booking fucking Dodger Stadium or something. That was Dodger Stadium. Godawfulmovieslive.com I, I really hope all the tickets aren't gone.
Sam, we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to open things up at LAX, where fans of the rock star death metal sensation Slade Craven have arrived in force. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> the name is Slade Craven. It's all downhill from there, guys. Can we just say best worst fake name in a while? <laughs> Knife gun murder. <laughs> Tramp scram. <laughs> I don't even know if it's the best worst fake name in this movie, but we'll get there. We'll get there. Also, are we going to say arrived in force? No, well, that's no. it's like <laughs> there, so there's like a group of slay. I, I'm not saying his name. That guy, the band guy. A, a group of fans have arrived. It's a very small group. And there's also like a counter, pro, there's like a protest and they're a counter. I, I don't know who's protesting what, but there's two sides, fans of him and then anti him. Yes. Guys. And they're so tiny. It's like 12 people on each side, yet there are riot police. And and it's exactly the same numbers. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right like with the their little... riot police are the biggest riot. There's like 50 riot police. <laughs> with the shields. <laughs> yeah. No, I love it so goddamn much. There's a news reporter there that goes like, you know, his his music is about death. And, you know, what with all the mass shootings, that doesn't sit well with conservatives. I'm like, oh, you can tell it's fiction because conservatives care about mass shootings in this universe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Does this music cause mass shootings? Probably. It's not like we recently started repealing gun laws at the state level and <laughs> desperately need someone to make an excuse for why we're allowing mass death as a result. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, they're pretty confused about the sides of this politically. Also, and it gets worse here, we see a sign from one of the Christian right protesters here, and it says metal equals arrow sign, kind of both at the same time, like metal with an arrow to a swastika, which what? was confusing to me. Like Very we, confusing, yeah. That's your side is the swastika for sure. <laughs> no, yeah, 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 as a Christian, yeah. Those, you got to, you have to take them. He could see something good in everybody, Noah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, so, but then Slade Craven arrives and he is, he's Marilyn Manson, right? Like that's obviously who they're going for with the makeup and everything and the image. Yeah. Yeah. That's what they went for, but they seem to have landed on exactly, yes, Marilyn Manson makeup wise for sure. But the band's theme in general, I would call vampire pirate gimp. Okay. Combined. Yep. Yeah. All together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We, and I feel like that was like a big argument, you know, where <laughs> like everybody gets to put in one idea into the idea jar. Less filling. Tastes great. Yeah. <laughs> and then some mom was like, we're using all of them. Equal compromise. Vampire pirate gimp. It's like a bunch of grandmas got together to contribute what they thought Marilyn Manson dressed like in concert yeah. to. Well, he's probably like a snowman and a sex pervert and also <laughs> a ghost. Lots of buckles. <laughs> Lots of buckles and a button nose. No, no. Have you met Aaron Ra? <laughs> So, and then we get probably, I'm going to say, the weirdest scene, the weirdest single shot in this movie, right? Because we're about to meet the broadcasters. Now, what we learn here is that Slade Craven is about to do his final concert ever, and he's going to do it aboard an airplane, of all fucking things, on a live web broadcast. Which is the stupidest <laughs> it's idea. so fucking dumb. <laughs> unbelievably dumb. The movie might as well, no one in the movie ever asks why or says why because the answer to that is, well, because it's Turbulence You're 3. right, yes, exactly. The first <laughs> because our turbulence is just... You can have Turbulence not on air. Things can be turbulent, not on air, whatever. <laughs> That's a terrible <laughs> idea for a concert event. That's just a really long, narrow concert party in a line. Small. Yes. Small concert party. Yep. You know how concerts have too much leg room? <laughs> I think we fixed it. Yeah. And so, it, but, but of course they're going to make up for the small audience there with a big web broadcast. So we cut to the production room where they're about to do the big web broadcast and we're going to meet these two characters by doing like this weird, inexplicable close up of their mouths. Yes. <laughs> Back and forth. They're trying to do banter and we're just looking at them from like, you know, the bottom of the nose to the top of the chin. Yeah. And that's never explained. That's never no. like 
justified? It, it, it seems like at some point we're going to back off of that and there will be some reason that like, oh, we couldn't see that they were both wearing the silly glasses until now so, or whatever. But there was just that was just this director's artistic fucking choice. I was just rooting really hard for somebody to sneeze right into the camera guy and it just like <laughs> falls backwards. <laughs> You think maybe they just, that's the only lens they brought that day or something. Oh, They're like, well, fuck yeah. it, man. We gotta make, gotta get something done. <laughs> All right. But anyway, so we also learned here that uh, we're gonna, we're gonna meet Erica, who is the web broadcast interview girl who's gonna be on the plane, right? She's gonna be a major character and she's gonna like give us a little tour through the rock concert airplane. Yeah. This is so stupid. <laughs> Well, at one point she says, you know, this will make the first, this will be the first live internet broadcast in history. This was 2001. The first fucking live internet broadcast was a, a Yankees game in 1990 fucking five, right? It's not like they mm -hmm. didn't need to really know their history for this shit. Ooh, the Yankees should play a game on an airplane. That's <laughs> yes. the five. their final game. Yeah. Yeah. And she's, <laughs> she's walking through it and she's like, it's like no airplane you've ever seen. And I wrote in my notes, I bet it's a little like an airplane I've seen. <laughs> so, it is, by the way, it's just a fucking airplane. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. So then we cut back to the, the reporter from the beginning that was explaining the plot to us. He is now going to interview the director of the FAA, who, as we all know, works in an air traffic control tower. <laughs> that's that's the same thing. Yep. <laughs> to, to be clear, one. air traffic control <laughs> granted an interview with a controller during his shift. Yes. Yep. And he's also the director of the FAA. He's, he's in the middle of pushing tin and there's like beeping things going on. And he's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's I. Yeah, I don't know. They wanted to do a concert on a plane. This is so dumb. I don't know. Well, he. This is obviously brain fog. Let me explain it. Uh, this is very, very normal. Okay. See, he's not. He's not directing the planes. He's the head of the FAA. He's directing all the towers that are directing. There's a. There's a tower directing tower at the oh, center. Oh, there's a of the really Earth. tall tower right, right in like no, the middle it's of Kansas. Really big. Yeah. Tower traffic control <laughs> tower. Yeah, it's a tower traffic control tower. Which, of course, is controlled by the president. Got it. That's who's in his ear. But that's not the dumbest goddamn thing about this character. The dumbest, his his name, the character's name is Mr. Stop Now. Because <laughs> he's, he's the head of the FAA. Because you go at the end, you have to, it, yeah, that's actually what they went with. Hey, guys, were the character names in this movie written by me trying to come up with puns at the end of a Citation Needed <laughs> episode? Because it sure feels like that. The villain's name is C Craven Raven. Okay, also in the movie's head, <laughs> does air traffic control tell be to pilots, be like, you stop, stop now for a second. Just stop, stop. stop now. No, stop right, wait, just wait, wait right there. And now you go. Right yeah. there. So, hey, he should really have the, he should really have the orange sticks, right? He should be that guy, yes. Mr. Stop. Don't go backwards, you'll die like a shark, but stop. <laughs> he needs big orange sticks though, because he's doing the other towers. <laughs> right, yeah, well, no, <laughs> So, okay, and then and now we're going to meet the pilot and the co-pilot. The pilot is nobody, but the co-pilot is Rutger fucking Howard. Rutger Howard. He's a real actor. Yeah, and, and you know what? Like, because Joe Montaigne's in this, I had this feeling constantly, like, Joe Montaigne's too good for this movie. I never got that feeling with Rutger nope. Howard. <laughs> you sure don't. <laughs> Here's the amazing thing. There's a note that actors sometimes get when you have a small part. They're like, give your character a secret. This is how that note can go wrong because <laughs> Rutger Hauer spends the entire movie acting like he's going to reveal some great resplendent plan and he never, don't be tricked by Rutger Hauer's performance into thinking he matters that much. He will not. Nope, not really at all. Yeah, but they say a bunch of pilot words and they talk about, you know, not liking the music that slaving craven or whatever makes yeah right the, the 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 pilot doesn't like you know kids and their music but rutger hauer does like it and he says it reminds me of nam it never stops what, what? yes <laughs> on both ends right so, so <laughs> the war didn't stop or the music doesn't ever the stop? music doesn't Stop. And also, hey, if you're hoping that'll ever be revisited or mentioned again, nope, nope it will not. 
No, they, the the fact that he was in Nam, the fact that he liked me, no, none of that ever matters in any fucking way. So, and now, of course, obviously, we would check in with the FBI's anti-hacking department. <laughs> yep. I got, I was so, ha- whenever they do hacking in any movie, yes, I'm like, the yes, word hacking is bring just it in. one of those. This is awesome. I tuck it right into my keyboard. <laughs> this is going to be stupid. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So this is where we meet Joe Montaigne. He's the FBI boss or whatever. And this is also where we meet Kate, the FBI hacking agent, who has finally found her arch nemesis, the super hacker Spectre. Yeah, it turns out (laughs) he was on level 11 of Pac-Man. So, So, okay. Yeah, this is the first time where my best worst shows up. Right. Because she's like, let's track him on this using the tracking software. And this map comes up, this 3D city map. But it's insane. There are no, like, they, they're just, it's just <laughs> random buildings in random yep. places. There's no semblance of roads or city blocks of any sort. Listen, th- this guy, Spectre, he uses the same technique as Dominion voting to cloud what he's doing. <laughs> right. You don't know where the votes are going and where they come back to. Right. No, you can see the map. All the different attacks. Yeah. As they're trying to trace him, she says, he's routing. I think about this sentence six times a day. He's routing through dormant websites. (laughs) You know how websites go to sleep (laughs) when you don't need them? They cocoon, actually. He's he's sneaking through there. (laughs) Blowing the dust off of their ones and zeros. The hibernating ones. Yeah, exactly. So, but then, but now it's time for us to meet him. We're going to meet Spectre, the super hacker. He is hacking in to the Craven broadcast because he wants to watch the live airplane concert. He just doesn't want to pay the, you know, the $10 to get past that. He just doesn't want to pay the $8. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm getting my ex's Netflix password. Because <laughs> yeah, he's a super hacker. Yes. And then we, we we meet him. He goes to hack into everything. And then we get the, the credits for the movie. We're seven and a half minutes in. We get the Slade Craven music video credits. Oh, my God. This music video is fucking fantastic because it's it's what your grandma thinks of Marilyn Manson music video is. Well, right. And it's also it's a made for TV movie, right? So they're constantly saying, do you think his music is too violent and controversial? And now they have to give us an example of that that's allowed on TV. So it's this hilariously anodyne controversial song. Yep. Like, look, I have a razor. I will cut people with my razor. <laughs> I mean, not not people. I'll mostly just well, you know, I will cut with my razor <laughs> to my gloves, <laughs> which I only have one pair of. So I also don't cut them. <laughs> But I start as though. To be clear, this is not heavy metal, though, also, right? That's been no, the title not. of the movie. This no. is not. Okay. I don't know what you call this. It but might it's as well definitely. be Frank Sinatra bopping along in the back. And I cut you with my razor. Oh, I'll <laughs> cut you with my razor. Maybe the movie was just like do. airplanes are made of metal and relatively heavy. Uh, it's heavy metal. There you go. Yeah. We did it. Turbulence. Yeah. Yep. Of course. The culmination of this scene is the best, which is they're supposed to be like, oh, yeah, well, sometimes they kill animals. So someone let um, the actor called Wes Craven uh, pet their dog. Mm -hmm. Now, let me be clear. The movie makes no attempt to make us think he kills this dog. He just very much leans down and was like, look, now I'm on camera with a dog. And a razor. What will happen now? Yeah. uh But eventually this resolves to what there's... I, I see the joke that they're going for. All of the metalhead goth kids or whatever that are going to be on the plane with the concert are all going through the metal detector, but they're all wearing so very much metal. Yeah. But they don't do that because the joke is them having to take all that metal off and put it on the little conveyor belt, but they don't have time apparently for that joke. Right. So the secure, we just watched a security person waving a metal detector in front of very obvious metal and being like, yep. <laughs> I waved the wand at you. I have calibrated this thing correctly. Yeah. You guys all have pre-check, right? Yeah, it's fine. Just go ahead. I don't know. 
Uh, did this make you long for airport security pre 9-11? Oh, because this really was it. You just walked through the little metal detector and then you picked up your keys and then you left and you had a oh. bomb or a box cutter. Nobody. No, they hand you champagne and a box cutter and you go through yes. it. It's fucking fine. Right. Just drinking a water bottle. Yeah. Liquids everywhere. Ah. Oh. Willy nilly. So. <laughs> it's a better time. All our time. shoes were on. You didn't have to see anybody's socks or smell their feet. It you weren't just... allowed to take your shoes off. It nope. was rude. It was the best. Yeah. Wow. And so, but as we're watching this line go through airport security, we meet two girls that have way more personality than all of these other schmoes. So we know they're going to be major characters or not. Well. Yeah. Not really. They're going to appear in the movie more they're gonna appear in the movie as much as they can without being paid whatever the over five rate was for this movie <laughs> so well they're oh they're each gonna have a love interest before it's over at least yeah yeah i just love they're panning down these like goth teenagers who are like supposed to be so wild and i just wrote in my notes every one of these goths is now a mom on tiktok who talks about how gentle parenting isn't working with their daughter kyler spelled with an h like every <laughs> 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 so. All right. So then we cut back to, to Kate, the FBI agent, and she's been told that even though they found the evil hacker Spectre, she doesn't get to arrest him. They're going to let, you know, field agents do that tomorrow for some reason. Yeah. They, <laughs> you know what? They're going to knock off in half an hour. It would just be rude to send them out now. <laughs> literally, literally. He's like, well, we'll get him tomorrow with the field team. No explanation. He's just like, you know. Yeah, right. And apparently she thought she's like, no, no, I get to I get dibs. I have dibs right here. I, I have the, my certificate of dibs. She's very upset. So Joe Montana leaves. She's standing there bitching at her partner about it. They, she's been chasing this guy for two years. Damn it. She should get to put the handcuffs on him because that's more points for her or something. I think that's how it works. I don't think that I feel like there's a distribution of labor, the pretty important one. Yeah, right. I feel like maybe her time is better spent like tracking down hackers. I don't know. What the fuck do I know? But her partner, you know, says, hey, man, you sh you need to let it go. And she's like, my part in the movie would already be over if I let it go. And he's like, no, fair. I'm going to leave and I'll trust you to do the right thing. So she taps his phone and <laughs> tries to arrest him. <laughs> Yeah, she she finds his phone number by going into her hacking hack program and she presses like one button and we see a graphic with the computer guessing phone numbers over and over and then being like, <laughs> got it. Got it. It's this yep. one. It's, yeah, right. <laughs> she would already know the number. But yes. Yeah, but she hears him order a pizza and that's going to be her chance, right? But before we get that, we have to get Slade Craven and his band going through airport security as well. In case you were doubting this movie's bona fides as a god-awful movie, the airport security lady says, what does this necklace mean? He, sa he says, it means that I have allegiance to Satan. And she goes, oh, all right. So I guess Gam technically could probably make some hay with this. To be fair, she reacts to that the same way I do, which is like, oh, eh, fine. So Craven shows up on the plane and he's not very helpful with the lady who's doing the interviews at all. He's so rock star frustrated or whatever. But again, like, here's the thing. All of the moments of tension in this movie are offset by the fact that they're on a plane, which is just unchy squinchy. So, right, like he's supposed to storm past the reporter and not give an interview, except they both have to do that turn sideways. Let's yeah, do right. butt to butt, not front to front thing. <laughs> kind of takes away the energy of the moment. Kind of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you have a lot of spikes. They're scrap. Ah, OK. <laughs> Yeah, but then we, we cut to him in the bathroom, or I'm sorry, we cut to someone in the bathroom who's got wearing a bunch of metal assembling a gun that they have secreted onto the plane behind all of the metal that the security guys were ignoring. Behind his musical shin guards that apparently yes. he wears? Mm -hmm. Why is that a thing? I feel like that's standard. Why do they wear shin guards? <laughs> it's un Interesting, because I... Uh, 
unless you're secreting a gun onto an airplane with it, I really don't see the point at all. <laughs> right. I feel like most of them aren't secreting a gun onto airplanes. So it's Secrets, just... Secrets, like surprise. Maybe there's a lot of shin vulnerability in a mosh pit. I've always assumed it's mosh pit related. Oh, okay. All right. Or like maybe a soccer game occasionally breaks out right in the middle of one of those or something. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Only one of us used to be a goth kid. So, you know, unless he chooses to answer these questions, <laughs> we have no answers. So, so it, 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 I'll, I'll leave all of you guessing who Eli means. <laughs> so then we cut to the band having their pre-show snacks. And I'm like, wow, we are more hardcore than this rock band before a show. Yep. Like we are so much more risque and, and, and hardcore than these guys can even pretend to be, at least on television. I guess our thing couldn't be on television. <laughs> so... <laughs> Me and Eli are usually like dueling dicks, like swords yeah. or something. And Noah has to be yeah. like, can you stop? We're, we're on in like one minute. <laughs> Noah's doing drugs. Yeah, and you was. and I are dueling dicks. Yeah. Yeah. Right. No, that's right. So, and, and so by the way, if you're wondering where the hell the plot is in this film, after all, we've been, we're 20 minutes in, we've been describing nothing but people getting on a plane. That's all the plot there is so far. That's it. Right. Yep. It's just people getting on a plane. And can I say, pretty normally getting on a plane, right? Like the rock guy sort of pushes past the lady, but other than that, he just sort of like sits down and is like, okay, so do we take, oh no, we have, we have to still do like the cross check and stuff. All right, well, I'm yeah, going right, to yeah. some chips. Exactly. God, I've been on, I've gotten on real planes quicker than this movie spends on it. Yeah. Yeah. Getting on a real plane is way more adventuresome and stressful than this entire movie. Fair that. Yeah, so so we we get the pilot actors showing off how many pilot words they learned, a lot of them. We get the flight attendant trying to give her safety lecture, but these metalheads won't even listen. They start chanting Craven over top of it. Yeah. But finally, at long last, the plane takes off. The movie can get going. And I guess like Craven and his band decide that they're going to start playing their concert even before the plane levels off at 30,000 feet. Because they're they're so metal. They're so metal. They went to the bathroom, even though the fastened seatbelt yes, sign hadn't been exactly turned off yet. Yes. Literally, the plot of the movie at this point. <laughs> the plot of the movie is like, well, people could could fall over and hurt themselves. <laughs> yeah, exactly. At this heavy metal rock concert we're having. And they don't even care. Yeah. People trying to rush the pit and then somebody coming the other way with a cart. No, no, we're doing coffee service now. Yeah, <laughs> oh. back, it up, back it up. Back it up. Can I just, can I step into your seat? No, I, no, oh, no, no. Okay. No. You just keep backing up slowly. Maybe you, you go past. <laughs> we're going to show all of this. Can I use the bathroom at the front? No. Or do I have you to have use to, the one? Yes, no, you I have to use the one in the back. back. Okay. Do you have to go to the bathroom for real? <laughs> I'm saying worship. <laughs> So, yeah, so, but everybody goes running towards the stage, even though the captain hasn't turned off the seatbelt light. It's a fucking monium. And the Erica is is interviewing Erica and her cameraman are interviewing some of the attendees, right? This is where we get, I have her down as main character girl because I still thought that there might be a main character in this film at this point. I love your hope early on in your notes, Noah. I got right. admit, Noah was making up plots for this movie left and right until minute hour and 49 when he was like, oh, okay. It's just yeah, this. it's just it's just this bullshit, I guess. Yeah, but like as if to underscore that, there's this great moment where this that one girl goes like, uh, yeah, no, I feel like we're in a movie and it hasn't established stakes or a plot yet, but it's about to. It's really exciting, you know. <laughs> and they also ask her, her and her friend, do you think his music is too violent? Right. And she's like, no, if anything, it's not violent enough. Honestly, I, 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 I'd I, have killed the fucking dog myself. All it's right. so funny because they accidentally defeat grandma's argument in a single sentence. It's like, do you think his music causes violence? And she's like, no, the metaphors exist. And she's like, oh, shit. Right. Metaphors. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh -huh. Fuck. But then we finally get to see the death metal stage that they've built on this airplane. And it looks like, you know. Somebody tried to put a fucking stage on an airplane. <laughs> yeah. So first of all, not only is this very clearly not on an airplane, they just did a worse job of making a stage, right? It, it was whatever the set designer could get away with convincing himself would fit on an airplane. So it's just like a somewhat shitty black box theater. You're going to watch your friend's one man show in. <laughs> They might as well all be facing the same direction in chairs, like the band in seats <laughs> facing the other way, too. 
Yes. <laughs> well, and also, so I checked a, a, a Boeing 747 can hold like 500 people or something like that. But like this stage with its like audience or area can hold like 40, right? Max, max, you could put 40 fucking people in that thing. So they have like, you know, a couple dozen fans that <laughs> rock it out at this show. It looks ridiculous. There's nothing. The best part of this movie, the funniest part of this movie is the crowd shots where the very clearly 13s of people are like, pretended to know the lyrics to this one, too. They at one point try to start chanting like Craven, Craven, but they don't they can't get the rhythm correct. Not enough people. Do you, yeah. like, you remember the cowbell sketch and he's off yes, by a exactly. tiny, <laughs> tiny bit? Craven, Craven, Craven. It was, Craven. <laughs> it was worse than that. Yeah. But yeah, so Craven finally comes out and he sings a song at us called Gun Love. It's another one of these anodyne controversial songs that they that they had the ability to do, right? Yeah. Yeah. And the, the Christian right hates guns. So that's why they don't like this. Yeah. yeah. He, and he pulls one of the sexy ladies out of the audience and he dances with her a little bit. And it's supposed to be like, oh, my God, it's such a huge deal. But it's like, I mean, he's going to dance with everyone at some point. There are nine people. On yeah, this right. Plane. Yeah, exactly. There are 13s of you here. <laughs> he's, exactly. he's doing more one on one time than we can do at Platinum Nights. At this plane. <laughs> like, can I sign anything? No, we're going all the fucking way to Toronto. That's a long damn flight. You huh? want me to do your voicemail? You want me to do like an outgoing voicemail? I can do that. <laughs> Four and a half hour flights. <laughs> we also get this fucking great moment that's, I guess this must be true in real life for hardcore rockers. It's just hard to maintain a character of like Satan in between songs. Yeah. Because right? during Gun Bullet, he's like, Gun Bullet, I'll shoot you. But then it's like, wow. And he's like, <sighs> Sorry, just a little sippy sip of water here. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. I'm, the, I'm the Antichrist. I'm getting a sip. This bottle's very small. There's <laughs> there's a great moment. So he's, I guess his thing is he fake murders his audience on stage. So they've got this like electric chair on the airplane. Oh, you mean the magic show, Noah? You yes. Mean the yes. Ma- <laughs> you mean the magic show that I, as a person who regularly attends magic conventions in Columbus, Ohio, was judgmental of? <laughs> Also, just to be yes. clear, they went through security with an electric chair. <laughs> <laughs> well, they waved the wand over it, right, so it's yeah, fine. Exactly. And it was metal, so it's it's all good. Yeah, <laughs> just this, just Marilyn Manson trying to shove an electric chair into the overhead, guys. It's just give me a second. Just it's give me a second. Fit, give I will me get a it. Sec- if if you pivot it so that the legs it's, are facing <laughs> out, it'll work. It's like the C shape. You you know how you get it around like a big chair. If this guy's backpack wasn't up here, there would be room. <laughs> Sir, can I move your coat? <laughs> I'm sane. So, meanwhile, so all the producers are on the ground. They're freaking out because Craven wasn't supposed to leave at that point in the show. Damn it. So they have to, like, throw on one of his videos to vamp, and they're going to lose viewers at that point. But as the producers are arguing about this, we look in the background, and we see that someone got shot on the on the camera, right? We, we They don't notice it, but we see it. And, and their background monitors. So, um, podcast listener, I have a bunch of you can't shoot a gun on a plane jokes that I wrote into my notes. And then I Googled it and you actually can shoot a yeah, plane. Yeah, exactly. This is really, really sad. Don't. We're not, we're not recommending it. Don't. Yeah, yes, I mean, don't. And, and, right. and the article I read was like, I guess if you blew out a window, it would be a problem. But I had a whole, I just, you know, if I get quiet during the rest of this episode, it's because I had a lot of... You're not allowed to shoot. They focus pretty heavily on See, it. I saw those and I, I had a bunch of corrections written in for you. I so I, I might sure. be quite, we're going to have to let COVID Heath handle this <laughs> thing. That was pretty much the rest of the show. I thought you got sucked out through the bullet hole. And you know what? No. That's on me. It's just, I just wanted to, <laughs> I don't know what I was picturing. I don't know what I was picturing. I don't want to talk about it. I'm picturing the same cartoon thing that you are. I think. Thank you. Right. Ass you first and you kind of wedge out. And yeah. Then, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, right, right. No, that and makes then there's sense. a fat guy. Fat guy gets caught and everyone's fine for a little bit. Yeah. So, but so, but the key here, though, is that there's somebody is shot on the plane. It's caught on the cameras, but the only person who notices it is Hacker Nick, the, the evil specter, the super hacker that's watching in on all of their, you know, whatever backdoor feeds. But just as he's noticing that, Kate shows up pretending to be the pizza delivery guy so that she can arrest Nick after all. 
Oh, yeah. And he's like, hey, cool, pizza. You you deliver pizza in a pantsuit. That makes sense. Cool, just put it right there on the table. <laughs> My curiosity has not peaked at all. Do you have a pizza badge? <laughs> ah, that's fine. <laughs> She's like, oh, wow, are you hacking into the concert? He's like, I sure am. She's like, wow, you could get arrested for this. And he says, no, only if somebody super smart snuck into my apartment disguised as a pizza. Well, hold on a second. <laughs> and then so she arrests him. And, and I just have one tiny note here. Throughout this sequence, she's just smaller than the guy they had as the hacker. But like the movie doesn't want to do like a struggle because that would be gross. And also, by the way, spoiler alert, they're going to be love interests by the end of the movie, which I fucking love. Mm -hmm. So she arrests him and he's just like, Yep, you got me. I don't say I have no I have no further <laughs> restraint against this. I guess yeah, uh, tag right. I'm it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, but so he's trying to explain to her that no, no, I just witnessed a murder on the cameras and everything. And she's like, Yeah, he does that kind of shit all the time. Meanwhile, we cut back to the producers, and because Craven hasn't come back out, they're losing viewers, which we know because we pan over to their losing viewers animation. <laughs> They made a graphic with moving skulls right. for representing the loss of viewers. The skulls fall down when they're losing viewers, but rise up when they're gaining viewers. It's so silly. So at some point, they just had like a graph and somebody was like, can we make it skull based? Well, no, yeah. it's a rock concert. <laughs> can you do it? Do it? What if it's blood and it's running? Can down? we make it like like squinting and arrows moving up and down? Yeah, like, yeah right. We can, do, we can do some squinting and arrows. I'm not downloading a GIF of a fucking skull. It's fucking skull GIF. <laughs> you rude. Jesus Christ, Eli. 2001, it's GIF. All right, so apparently me and Eli and Heath have to have a very serious argument, which means we're going to take a quick break. But we'll be back in a hurry with even more of Turbulence 3 Heavy Metal. Dude, please. Cherry tomatoes are red. They count. Why do you hate Christmas, Heath? All right, so, hey, guys. Guys, what's, uh, what's all the hubbub? It's December. Which means... Eli won't eat anything but candy canes now. Because I love Christmas. What do you guys not get about this? Well, I, I mean, we can't make him eat people food, Heath, but at least we can take care of his teeth with a Quip electric toothbrush. What's a Quip electric toothbrush? Quip comes with timed sonic vibrations with 30-second pulses to guide a dentist-recommended two-minute clean. A lightweight and sleek design for adults and kids with no wires or bulky chargers to weigh you down. Plus, a multi-use travel cover that doubles as a mirror mount for less clutter. Reusable handles in a range of sleek metal hues, including best-selling all black and all pink, as well as bright plastic colors to pop on your bathroom counter. Wow, that sounds convenient. Trust me, you've got to try it. Go to getquip.com slash awful right now for your first refill free. Plus, shop Quip's lowest prices of the year this holiday season. That's G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash awful. Quip, the good habits company. Hooray, Christmas is saved. We at least chew them this year. No, please. No. Slade. There he is. Whatever. God. So, um, so you, you want to talk to us about your ideas for the farewell tour? Yeah. So I was thinking, what if my final concert was on a plane? Sorry, did you say on a plane like an airplane? Or maybe a flat plane? Yeah, airplane. Like, how metal is that? Well, it's not metal at all. Not at all metal. It's aluminum. What are you guys talking about? A plane? Thousands of feet in the air? That's totally metal. I mean, we, 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 like with all the safety guidelines and the little seat belts, I feel yeah. like you're not picturing. Are you talking about an airplane? An oh, airplane? No, no, no. Okay, I, I see the miscommunication. We're we're gonna clear out part of the plane and make it a concert venue. Oh, so you're talking about like a giant plane, like a like a tank transporter. All right, so I could see how maybe that would be cool. No, nope, no, no. I no, I mean like a normal airplane, like a plane. A normal plane. Yeah. Like one that goes from LA to Toronto or whatever. It's such, it's such a strange choice of locations. Okay, but Slade, like a normal plane would fit like a few hundred people. Well, yeah, and that, uh, that's if you didn't cut take some out for a concert stage. It's going to be so metal. Okay, it's, it's going to be a poorly attended wedding is what it's going to be. Metal, poorly attended wedding. Oh, okay. 
And we're back for more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action with Kate going through Nick's computer shit as he sits helplessly aside in his handcuffs. And they discuss his like hacker background, I guess. I don't know why this movie would have a scene of how did you track me down when they didn't bother to learn anything about computers? She might as well say your megabytes smell different. <laughs> <laughs> Well, but we have to establish in this scene that he's a good hacker with a heart of gold, right? She's like, well, you know, what about that time you took down all the power on the eastern seaboard? And he's like, well, they were going to raise the rates and I convinced him not to. And I'm like, yeah, I'm sure all the people on ventilators that died because of that <laughs> felt like it was worth their sacrifice. I c killed a couple thousand people, but it, yeah, it really just, got no, PSC and G's attention. Let me tell you. <laughs> wasn't really thinking about traffic lights, really. That was the one that was the big one that I didn't think through. Air traffic control, speaking of the movie, air traffic control is also <laughs> on power. It turns out, yeah. I just thought there were more Generex sort of floating around out there, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, so, it, it, and of course, she's like, well, that's against the law, and that's evil, and that's bad. And he's like, well, how'd you find me? She's like, well, I hacked into it. He's like, ah, ah, we both hacked. We are even now. And she's like, shut up. And to emphasize that point, she takes out her gun and holds it to his head. Yeah. And it's it's very much supposed to be a comedy beat, but the actor doesn't play. He's like, hey, hey, don't shoot me in the head and murder me. And she's like, right. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. That's, <laughs> I was pretending to be a cop. I'm actually not supposed to be here, but I am pretending to be a cop. So I figured. I don't know why they would even give me handcuffs if I'm not one of the arrestees. Why type. would I have a gun? Why would I have a gun? I am on a computer as my job. <laughs> To shoot someone's computer. <laughs> <laughs> but meanwhile, back on the plane, I, I have no main character girl because I, I have no other name to call this person. It's okay, Noah. You had high hopes for this I character did, to I speak did. again before the literal last seconds of the movie. And I'm proud of you for that. I'm proud yeah. of you. <laughs> so, yeah, but she's flirting with the cameraman. This is where she tells him that she wants to be a journalist when she grows up. That's so that's going to be important to that, to that final moment. But then Erica, the interview chick, comes in and she's like, hey, you need to get your ass in gear, cameraman, and go get Slade Craven and make him come back and do the rest of his show. Right? Yeah. So he goes back into the back and he's like, hey, Slade Craven, do the rest of your show. And he's like, no. And he's like, yeah, I mean. I, Why would you listen to me? I'm literally I, a I cameraman just, for a local news, news organization. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I don't really know Perhaps. what I'm doing here either. Would you like me to fly the plane while we're at it? Like, is there anything else that's very clearly yeah. not my job you want me to do? <laughs> I tried to restart it and there's the, they're doing the coffee service. It's, it's going to be yes. like 10 minutes. <laughs> so meanwhile, so but Nick the hacker, though, has convinced Kate to look back over the video that he saw of the person getting murdered on the plane. Right. So we see that in slow-mo. Yes. As if, like, we, watch, we watched it before. It's a guy getting shot in the back of the head very clearly. Like, the slow-mo does not add anything. It, oh, yeah. No, it's still definitely a murder. Yeah. And it's hilarious because he goes, like, does that look fake to you? And I'm like, I mean, yeah. Yes. Yeah. It looks like it's, it's because a, there's no blood. It's on TV. Made for TV so. movies. So yeah. <laughs> looks really fake. So then we go back to the cockpit. And Rutger Hauer says to the pilot, he's like, hey, man, you should probably check things out back there. You know, how sometimes the pilot has to just walk around in the plane and make sure that it's all still together and shit. And he's like, yep, I got to do good my togetherness check. I will be back. You going to go kick the tires from the inside of the plane or whatever? Yeah, so they're drawn up. They're drawn up in now like like testicles in the cold. I was in Blade Runner. We know, man, you were in yes. Blade Runner. <laughs> I made up that monologue. You You made up part of it. I made up. <laughs> so, so we watched the pilot have to like wrestle his way through the mosh pit and everything. And he seems, he seems surprised at the mosh pit, right? Not just upset, but he seems like, but I mean, no one told me there was going to be a rock concert going on in here. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. But while he's out doing that, Craven comes back out for the second song. Finally. But he doesn't start singing where the lyrics are supposed to start. One of the guys cut, turns to him and is like, hey, man, this is the part where the lyrics start. And he's like, I'm sick of lyrics. I want to shoot somebody with my gun instead. 
and everybody screams and they're all excited because they think it's part of the show, right? Because that's what he does. Okay, this was almost my best worst, which is best worst not realizing how many people have a gun and how many people don't. <laughs> <laughs> because he will now, for the next, what are we going to say, 20, 30 minutes of this movie, hold the entire plane hostage, even though all it would take is more than one person running at him. Yes. Uh huh. But so he he's like, oh, who am I going to shoot? I'll shoot the pilot. And he shoots the pilot, but it's a blank. Right. And everybody's like, oh, who? And meanwhile, we check back in with the producers, right? The Duke guys doing the live broadcast. And the views are going crazy now. He's up to four million views, which means that there were millions of people who were like, you know, I'll pay eight bucks for this stream, but I'm not going to do it until I hear through the grapevine that Craven has come back on stage for his second song and pulled some very serious shenanigans. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Why, how would they know if they weren't? Anyway, but yeah, but the, we, we see their little skull graphic. It's going the other way now. Four million viewers. Yeah. And then Craven shoots the pilot to death for realsies. Yeah. I just want to throw out there that I really hope Taylor Swift does this at her upcoming farewell tour. I think, this, I think this is a great bit for your concert. You fake shoot someone, then you real shoot someone. Just, and then you're because nobody's expected you to real shoot him right after the fake shooting. Yeah. Which means, by the way, that he added a blank to his gun for like nothing but dramatic effect. Right. For like a, a comedy beat. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. So, okay. So then we get a scene where everybody realizes that, no, the pilot is actually for real Z's dad. This is where Kate realizes that, you know, because one murder, that could be anything. Two murders, you should probably call your boss at the FBI about it. Yeah. Look, there's a behind the scenes murder at every concert. That's just right. showbiz, yeah, exactly, baby. Exactly. But That's just a regular guy. This is the fucking pilot. On stage? Come on. Yeah. Uh -huh. And she calls her boss and she's like, hey, boss, uh, first of all, I arrested that guy by myself, even though you told me not to. Two... I would like you to take me seriously as I inform you there's a murder happening at a rock concert that has, and I can't emphasize this enough, nothing to do with our plot so far. Yes, right, exactly. It's a good thing there's apparently no specialization in the FBI. Everyone in the FBI is working on every case on the <laughs> on FBI every type at of all case. times. <laughs> so, yeah. So, all right. And, and we cut back to the airplane and then we get... Heath's, but well, I, I guess this isn't quite Heath's best worst, but this is like the start of it because like Craven has to vamp. He needs a monologue to have now that he's taken the, the plane hostage or whatever, but he has nothing to say. Right. So he just sort of just vamps for like five minutes while he's pointing guns at everyone. Yeah. And it's again, it's supposed to be like scary Satanist stuff, but this has got to play on TNT while grandma slowly falls asleep and dies in her chair. So he's like, I know you all are going to go to fork and heck. <laughs> you better get ready for some real bull pucky around here. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. He's like, do you guys want to play a murder game? And then finally, one of the crowd is like, I don't want to play a murder game. And he tackles him, right? And everyone else just stands there and goes, well, I sure hope he gets, I hope he wins. <laughs> Rooting for you, buddy. Rooting for you. Let me know if there's anything I could do to emotionally support you in this time. <laughs> yeah. But ultimately, Craven wins the fight because he's pretty badass. And he pulls Erica out of the crowd and holds his gun to her head. And he's like, if anybody else tries to push me, I'm going to shoot this girl in the head. To be clear, he does not shoot the guy who just tried to stop him. No. He's like, hey, hey, hey all right, that was your one. <laughs> that was your one. Okay. <laughs> you helped me out earlier with my magic show in the electric chair. So I forgive you for trying to disarm me and end my terrorist reign of terror. Yes. <laughs> but... <laughs> If you do that again, totally going to shoot you. Okay, well, there's this. It's a five strike system, but <laughs> if you if you you are one down, that's all you need to know. <laughs> yeah. So, but it, and this is where the producer down on the ground is like, "Hey, you know, we should probably not continue to broadcast this. We should cut the feed." <laughs> and and now the characters are just like, "Huh, movie movie feels kind of over." Yeah, do we, right. Um, do we want to do something? <laughs> well, that I really would make removed all the stakes, I guess. The movie come back. We, we're only at like thirty minutes, guys. We need another yes. hour of movie. And then we cut to um, 
Kate, Nick finally convinces her to uncuff him so he can get back to the, like, he can get the feedback with his super hacker powers. Right. Right. I wanted her to be like, okay, no, I'm, I'm keeping you cuffed. Just tell me the one button to press. That's what you seem to do when you hack things. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> You're never more than six keystrokes away from anything. So, <laughs> so, okay. But then we cut to, uh, we cut back to Craven holding the gun on, on Erica, and he says, he turns to the audience and he's like, so, what do we do now? As though the movie was asking us for ideas. Because yeah. now I'm just a guy on a plane with a gun in September of 2001. So, <laughs> Jesus. Kind of yikes in it up here. Yeah. So, but Joe Montaigne and his generic FBI sidekick get a call from Benny, the producer guy, and they, they're going to go now and, and see Benny. They're going to, like, finish the movie off in his production studio. Yeah. And they're confused about this guy's, like, whole plan, too. They're like, so does the hijacker have any, like, demands? <laughs> and apparently, no, he doesn't have any. Okay. I don't know. We're going to come down to your office anyway, but there's no, the, the movie's over, isn't it? There's nothing happening. I don't see what we would do. <laughs> so, Oh, and then on the way, he has to chat with Mr. Stop now. From earlier, yes, he did come back. We see the two of them have a quick chat. This will matter. Not at all, but it'll set up something later. And then we go back to Craven giving us what I believe is a nobody knows where the fuck this movie is going monologue. Yeah, I wrote the villain monologue is stupendously boring. Yeah, because it is both. It's satanic without being too satanic for TV. It's scary without being too scary for TV. And it's vague because the thing he wants hasn't been revealed in the plot yet. Right. So he's just like, I want to do the hokey pokey and turn my and turn yourself around and <laughs> let, let me finish. Don't do that. <laughs> Stop. It, it's like an actor's in a fight with a producer and he's doing like an angry table read of a bad guy speech. But that's what we watch <laughs> in the shot. Like his mom made him do this table right. read. Sarcastic. <laughs> So, but then we, we cut back over to the hackers. Nick has gotten the cameras back, but he needs to do even more hacking. So he's going to need Kate's help. Luckily, he has a second keyboard sitting next to his other one so they can do like a little couples hacking. <laughs> yeah, and I wrote my notes here. Let me just say, if this ends up being a love story between the two hackers, consider me charmed. I spoiled it already. I'll spoil it again. That is what happens. This yep. subplot fucking rules. <laughs> Not enough of the nerdy sidekicks fall in love. That's the trope Absolutely. I want to bring back. Amen, brother. So, and also we should point out that like, because this is, again, this is Turbulence 3, right? But the movie, the... Like the turbulence never factors into the movie, but they keep showing the exterior of the plane and be like, oh, we're flying through the storm from day after tomorrow now. But like, <laughs> but nobody on the plane ever seems to notice that, right? It's nope. not relevant to the plot. Also, by the way, they have her log into the FBI computer system to like find out some information about the mm -hmm. people on the manifest. <laughs> and we watch her type in her password. Her username is her name, just spelled mm -hmm. out regular. Password, six characters. Oh, wow. For the FBI computer system. <laughs> and then they have their like But hacker, it includes the capital letters. Their hacker meet cute on the, the two side-by-side <laughs> -side yeah. keyboards, like a tandem bike. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they should have just used one keyboard and it's like ASDF, JKL, semicolon. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, but who have space bars? We space bar together, baby. They start crossing so. <laughs> over hands like they're doing piano. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> hack and soul is that anything hack and yes. soul yes. and so okay and so now we have this moment where where Joe Montaigne is trying to call Kate but he can't get a signal because we're in the early days where writers were first trying to figure out how to handle cell phones fucking up all their familiar tropes right really fucked up a bunch of plots it was tough back then it in was. the early aughts let me tell you they were, they was, it was virgin territory for them. So they're like, oh, stupid government phones. They never work when it's plot convenient for them not to. <laughs> so. Do you want to pull over and just use a phone? So, no, 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 we are driving <laughs> and the phone doesn't work. We, we are going to drive to a place that has a phone. Would you like to? You No, no, no. <laughs> I still have I still have lots of night and weekend minutes to use up. 
Waste my money. I have 50 free hours on this CD. Does that help? No. <laughs> on this AOL CD. <laughs> we have to bring it with us. Does it know how many hours are left on the CD? So, and then we, we, we cut over to Craven, you know, threatening to shoot Erica. And he's like, hey, you know, you better do the thing that I want done or I will shoot. Like, he's so weirdly vague about these murder demands that he's making. I feel like those should be super, super duper clear. Did he try to work in a rhyming thing like for spite to win a bet or something like that? Because <laughs> at one point he's like, you'll find out what makes me tick and make it quick. Rick, like, for <laughs> no reason during this weird talk with the FBI guy. Yeah. yeah. But apparently what he's saying is, is that you will know how serious I am about this. If you ask Mr. Stop now back at that air traffic controlling air traffic control tower. Right. And we cut back there. And, and just as they're calling him to ask what the hell that meant, the tower explodes in a very weird order. It's so stupid. It explodes. And then the guy on the phone, because he could, they're not there, goes, the phone cut off, but I heard an explosion before it did. Well, right, because sound travels faster than phone lines. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I'm exploding. All right. Well, we're definitely now caught up on the plot. Let me tell you that. Why did the satanic terrorists blow up? the air traffic control tower. Is there any reason for that to have happened? Because this movie had explosion money. Yeah, exactly. Th that's exactly it. That's There's no goddamn reason except that they had the money to do an explosion, so they were doing an explosion, damn it. <laughs> I would imagine, you know, you throw show an explosion at an airport in the ad, that probably is going to make sure, it seem yeah. like more mm -hmm. shit happens here. But yeah, it's never <laughs> plot relevant. The coffee cart rolls to the end of the aisle and explodes for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So, meanwhile, Kate is on the computer checking the cross manifests of the fucking whatever on the FBI, whatever. And they've realized that it's the Craven that's threatening to shoot Erica isn't the real Craven. He's just some other dude in Marilyn Manson makeup. Yeah. But they need to check. Right. Right. They need to use his voice analysis program. So she goes, do you have a voice analysis program? And he's like, oh, of course, it's right under V for voice analysis program. I use that all I the have time. Everything is plot yeah. convenient, yeah. actually. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but she runs it through the voice analysis program. The samples do not match. It is a fake craven. The fucking graphics for this are like his. You can see the voice on the left is bar graph. And the voice on the right is totally different. Bar different bar. His, his voice is ten on the left, and this guy's voice is three <laughs> on the left. Yeah, they check his vocal DNA, and it doesn't line up. So, so then we cut to the real Craven, who's waking up tied away in some you know forgotten corner of the plane. Yeah. I, I, apparently planes have big empty rooms in them. I feel like they generally use all of the space, but not in this one, Dan. No, it. no, this one's got a lot of space for um, kidnapping shenanigans, let me tell you. Also, look, Christian movies over the years have had a lot of call in asking me to be able to tell white people apart, but uh, this was almost my best worst because trying to tell the two white guys in identical white makeup apart is fucking impossible. Yeah. People spend the next two scenes cutting between them and I'm like, I don't know which one's the good guy and which one's the bad guy. Right. I don't know which one's the real one and the fake one. Yeah, eventually the movie realizes that and knocks off the fake one's wig, but it takes them a minute to do that. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, so, and then we, we cut back to the hackers and they're figuring out that the fake Craven is a real Satan worshiper. Whereas the real Craven is a fake Satan worshiper. Yeah. And um, how do they find that out, Noah? Like, how do they figure out that he's a Satan worshiper? Well, they check the website. They check, they the check Satan his <laughs> Satanic cult's <laughs> website, yep. which has graphics, has like yep. boo, 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 graphics. Yes. Okay. They, they go to that, <laughs> that website. The landing page has like, Nine very useful clues about their plan for global yes. domination <laughs> uh, involving some sort of airplane-based concert, probably. 
Well, and and keep in mind, right, that they just figured out that the guy who's pretending to be Craven isn't really Craven. Rather than calling her fucking boss, who's the FBI agent working on this hijacking case, she's like, well, I guess we should check out SatanWorshippingHijackers.com and really get an idea <laughs> what they're about first, right? You know, so. And then he, he prints out that landing page <laughs> on does. a printer. Mm -hmm. They're looking yep. at it and he prints it out <laughs> and then shoves the paper in her face and she's like, yeah, it's, it's the same thing. Now it's, it's closer. This is the year 2001, too, so I really wanted them to watch how fast a laser printer would have worked back in 2001. PC load letter? What the fuck is that? So it's not, I don't know why the fuck it's not. I did it oriented wrong. It was connecting just yesterday. Yesterday when I tried to do this, it worked. God damn it. We're going to have to do it across four pages and then send it to myself as a PDF. So fucking dumb. And meanwhile, back on the plane, real Craven is MacGyvering himself through an escape because apparently this is one of those just leaves knives laying every fucking where type of planes. And there is a box cutter that's conveniently located in the room he's hidden in. Yeah. Airlines have those for uh, cutting boxes during the flight. Right. Well, well, right. And also on top of that, rooms that you put kidnapped people in have those, you know, in case they need to cut boxes during their kidnapping. <laughs> <laughs> there are at least two reasons why this should not fucking be here. It's just like a spinning, glowing hologram above it. He's like, oh, OK. Yeah, no, no, right, no, no that's, I just need to go over here and press X. That'll be useful. <laughs> So and, and then, of course, this is where I wrote in my notes. Oh, my God, please tell me this ends like the Spider-Man meme. Right. This movie. But it doesn't. It's not going to. Like I said, he knocks off his, his wig at some point. Anyway, so then we go to Joe Montana doing his best, worst negotiations. He's so phoning it in. I felt like they came to his house and like bundled him into a suit and they were like, here, read these lines at gunpoint. <laughs> He's just like, oh, no, what do you want? Don't his literal attempt to hostage negotiate is let everyone go, please. <laughs> <laughs> that's it that's all he tries yep pretty much yeah okay but he puts him on hold <laughs> during the hostage negotiation and when he's like wait, wait, wait hold on I just I, I've, I gotta check something really quick no just really quick is it, I think DoorDash or something just you uh, sit tight <laughs> be right back yeah and so and Nick and Kate they're of course they're still sleuthing away about the Satanists and everything and they just they discover that the most satanic place in all the world is a little graveyard in Kansas and that's where the plane is heading. They're going to try to crash the plane into Stull, Kansas and open a gateway to hell. This is, by the way, this is not, this is an urban legend that was extant. They didn't make this up for the movie. So when he says like, you know, the, when the Pope visited Colorado, he had to route his plane around Stull, Kansas so he wouldn't fly over the satanic thing. That's not a real thing that happened, but it's a urban legend that predates this movie. Yeah. I fell down a stall Kansas rabbit hole and yeah, I too. greatly enjoyed it, <laughs> including a bunch of YouTube videos of people just walking around this shitty old church being like, yep, filled Any with evil. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, so the idea is there's a gateway to hell there and they were picturing like like an airplane shaped cartoon hole going into the ground and then like a demon <laughs> popping his head out like, and right. like, oh my God, they found hell us. Hell being on the other side of And hell. then Satan bursts through it and he's like, you notice how there's no plane parts on the ground around here? That's weird, right? <laughs> hmm? I think Marsh is lying. <laughs> so hell doesn't burn that hot. <laughs> and so, okay, but then Craven calls the producers using his secret Craven phone. Apparently, they also locked him away with, you know, a bunch of communication equipment in case he wanted to get in touch. Here's your box cutter and your cell phone. <laughs> also, here's a list of my physical weaknesses. <laughs> but I, I've, I've sort of mapped them on my body in case you need to strike any pain points. Just, uh, you know, it's for you. Yeah, but the FBI is like, how do we know that this is the real Slade Craven? And he's like, you can check against my uh, tax returns. I paid $4,287.13 in, in federal income tax last year. Yeah. And, and there's, a, there's a lamp post in these four squares. <laughs> <laughs> also, 
that, did that create a doodly do for everyone else where Wes Craven in full makeup is doing his own taxes? Yeah, right. Just, <laughs> sorry, Larry, I know you've got a gimp thing in your mouth right now, but are you paying for those with the company card? Well, well you got to be, man. Well, no, because then it's a double write-off. It's, it's because, well, we're paying taxes as an essence. I don't even think we're itemizing our deductions, are we? Are we not taking the standard? Really, no, we, we're not taking standard this year. Do you know how much the standard is? Right. 40000 Well, I'll tell you what. We are two-thirds of the way into this movie, <laughs> and I think it just grew itself a protagonist. So we're going to pause for a quick celebration, but first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Why the fuck would you have a concert on a plane? I mean, I get that they're streaming it, but couldn't you have streamed something from a stage, too? Could the writers not at least, like, name his latest album something airplane-related or something? Find out even more questions I have about the bewilderingly bad writing when we return for the admittedly better-than-I-expected conclusion of Turbulence 3 Heavy Metal. Morning Starship. There you go. There, there you go. it yeah. is. There you go. And maybe uh, like a creamy pasta, like a tortellini, maybe. Oh, you got it, buddy. Really let the bacon crisp up this time. Oh, I will do. Will do. Hey, guys, what's going on? Eli's nursing me back to health from my COVID. Oh, yeah? Wait, what are you getting? Some soup, some saltine crackers? Oh, I wish. It actually turns out that Heath medically can only be cured from the delicious meals offered by HelloFresh. Wait, what's HelloFresh? I, wouldn't you know what HelloFresh is if you're requesting the meals? I have COVID. Fine. Fine. Bog. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. And HelloFresh's festive eats makes mealtime a snap. Choose from holiday-inspired dinner recipes, seasonal add-ons, or even a three-course offering. All designed to make holiday meals extra yummy and easier than ever. I mean, that sounds great, but how do you arrange it around Heath getting sick? Well, HelloFresh has plans that work with your schedule. Change your preferences, delivery day, and address in just a few clicks. It's true. I was a HelloFresh customer even before they were an advertiser. That's why I, Heath Enright, personally endorse it as a product. All right, I'm sold. Where do I sign up? Just go to HelloFresh.com slash Awful18 and use code Awful18 for 18 free meals plus free shipping. So I go to HelloFresh.com slash Awful18 and use the code Awful18 for 18 free meals plus free shipping? That's right. All right, then. I mean, I I, I never heard of charcuterie boards for COVID before. Up, but, up, up, uh, up. COVID. Sure. Yep. Also, I'm low on Parma ham. Can I get a top up real quick? You got it, buddy. We have any jamon? <laughs> All right, everyone. I call together this satanic meeting of the cult of 10 million or whatever the fuck we're called. Yes. yes. Anyway, a a everything seems to be going super well. Uh, we're going to sneak onto that plane during the concert, take it over, crash it into the church, yada, yada, yada. That's all awesome. But I think we're missing something. What is that, Dark Lord? A website. For our satanic cult? For our, our satanic cult. Yeah, yeah. So can we get like a, I don't know, like a MySpace page or something? I just want to, I want people to like know our deal. You know what I mean? I like just get the information out there for people to find. I, I don't think MySpace is a thing anymore. Uh, I that... think it's for bands or something. Oh, right. All right. That's, that's right. Okay. So what about like a square space? Can we make like a satanic square space? Sure. Yeah. No, that's like. 200 bucks or something I could Jeez, see 200 I could bucks? Wow. Wow. Is there like a is there a cheaper option? $200 is like no money in the grand scheme. Well, no. I know. I, I'm just but I'm just saying maybe we can go like go on Fiverr, price it out, you know, maybe get a WordPress. This feels like a time cost thing like fine, you're going to spend a bunch of You know what? We'll spend the $200, get a square space for our satanic cult so everyone knows why we're opening the gate to hell. Got it. Sure. Okay. Okay. Uh, do we want a Shopify account for like merch too? No, no. Those guys already work with Satan in their own way. Okay. Got it. They sell a bunch of Nazi stuff. They do. Yeah. A lot. A lot. 
And we're back for still more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action with the generic FBI sidekick verifying to Joe Montaigne that, yes, that was, in fact, the exact amount that Slave Craven's income tax was last year or whatever. Yeah. And and then we, we got back over to the hackers. And this is where I actually went back in and wrote in my best worst because Nick has now a spinning... 3D wireframe drawing of an airplane <laughs> on his computer in what appears to be some kind of version of Microsoft Paint where like airplanes facing in various directions are selection tools. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, yeah, so I used my uh, airplane hacking thing. He's in <laughs> right here. There's the dot for it. He's in the two yes. part. Right. Yeah. What? Fucking information does that give them? He's in the tube portion of the airplane. Oh, he's not on the edge of the wing. Okay, so we can stop oh, looking on maybe the wing. He was riding the wings. So yeah, that helps. <laughs> can, can, the wheels, can, can we cross out the wheels too? Oh, and then this is super important. This is also where the broadcast finally reaches 10 million viewers. It never goes to 10 million and one, right? <laughs> apparently. Well, it apparently maxes out at 10 million. Like they stopped. Yeah, like getting to like, well, like level 256 in an 8 bit game or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. But now Nick decides because he knows that, he's, that Craven is in the tube section, he can now send him a secret hacker message. So he gets to work on that. We cut back to Joe Montaigne. He has now reached the duck season, rabbit season, rabbit season portion of his negotiations. Okay, yeah. This this is this is the best worst that I was talking about. <laughs> He's like, so do you have any demands? Because earlier I heard you did not, and that's that's crazy because then there's no point of, you know, doing a hostage thing on an airplane hijack. So do you have any of those? <laughs> Griffin's like, I've well, I want you to to die. I don't like you. <laughs> He's like, cool. Cool. That doesn't really yes. help you. That's not, we're not getting do you, anywhere. Do you have anything else that. like pizza? Do you want to, what, what do you want? He's so unmoved and bored by that. He's like, yeah, I guess those are your lines in the movie. Ugh. Someone say cut. Anyone say quat? No cut. <laughs> Right. And, but then Joe Montana tries to like talk him down from just mm -hmm. doing anything bad. He's like, just, you know, consider the people around you. I want you to look into the eyes of the people around you. Just look at those people. And they show us those people. So I wanted evil fake Craven to be like, uh, I see, I see like, I don't know. It looks like the cast of God spell at a funeral or what? something. I don't know. <laughs> Are you really trying to save these people? And then he's like, but OK, so but what if I and, and here's just hear me out. What if you just didn't like all the stuff that you're doing? What if you just instead didn't? And Craven's like, that's the is that really the best you've got, man? Because I feel like there's you're supposed to build a rapport. Or Does your character have anything better? No, my, my, my character. Just, <laughs> I don't know what's doesn't. going on. Call me back in like five minutes. I'll think of some. I have I might have a demand then. I don't know. Could you check out my uh, my organization's website? It's a uh, it's a long one. Okay, <laughs> HTTP. It's two thousand one. So. <laughs> www. Yeah. So and and then Satan finally. Dot fun. For the, fun. <laughs> for the first time in the whole fucking movie, we get a lot of that titular turbulence, right? The plane shakes a little bit, and this is where cameraman decides that he's going to go on the offense, and he attacks fake Craven. This is where, luckily, fake Craven's wig falls off, and we can finally tell the two characters apart easily. Right. And once again, again, I just have to point out, he attacks fake Craven, and everyone else in this crowded room is like, Rooting for you, buddy. I really wanted the other guy to be like, oh, yeah. No, I tried that already. I tried the wrestling <laughs> again thing. Well, not everybody, right? Because fake Craven drops his gun and Erica, the interview girl, picks up the gun. So now she's got it and she points it at Craven and she shoots not Craven, but the bandmate that's trying to help take him down. Damn it. Turns out she's a bad guy the whole time. Oh my god, she's on the evil team. She's been eye steepling this whole time, and she's bad. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Okay, wait. She could not be more evil. So wait, let me let me just doodly do over to Satanist headquarters. All right, guys. So here's the plan, Jill. I'm gonna need you to get a job with a local <laughs> news organization covering music venues, and then I'm gonna need you to get really fucking lucky. Yeah, Steve. 
Jurgen You're going to become an you airplane to, pilot. Yes, right. You didn't get assigned to this fucking plane. It gets dumber and dumber as we go. Yeah. You get a job in the mailroom. You work your way up. We're going to do our plan in like six years. <laughs> <laughs> and and I'll get famous as a musician. Yeah, right. So, All right. But but now but now Erica can go full fucking antagonist, right? Because apparently the 10 million viewers was what they were waiting for this whole time. Once they got the 10 million viewers, they could do their their evil plan. Right, be- because of an old prophecy that said one shall lead 10 million somewhere. Yes. That's some sort of satanic thing. Yeah. That was a reference to internet downloads it turns out. Yeah. Really wanted a flash cut to Satan in hell being like, damn, I should have done a Mr. Beast thing. That would have been way easier. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Regardless, you have to adjust for inflation with old timey prophecies like that. Like, yeah. It was like way more than all the people when they wrote that down, probably. Right. Yeah, exactly. That was twice the population of the earth back then. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) And I love. So at this point, Kate calls. Joe Montaigne. And she's like, yeah, we've got a lot of information I should have given you in a, in a much more timely fashion. So she tells all of this stuff to him. And then Joe Montaigne has to say it back to her. And this is a little like a trick that writers do, you know, where they'll have a character in the movie say out the stupid ass fucking plot out loud as if to tell the the viewer, yes, I hear it too, man. God damn it. I wish they yeah. gave me money and my kid is hungry. The iced tea effect, if you will. Yes, right. Exactly. <laughs> So he's like, wait a minute. Are you telling me that a real Satanist kidnapped a fake Satanist and is now going to use an airplane full of fake Satanists to open a real hole for the real Satan? She's like, (laughs) yeah, that is the fucking plot that we went with, I guess. And we're going to have a hacker that you've just arrested guide a rock, the real rock star through the plane with his hacking plane abilities. Yeah. He's going to guide him. Morpheus style. To kill the hijackers. Yes. (laughs) Marilyn Manson (laughs) is going to die hard this plane. Yeah. (laughs) It's the plot of... Okay, but just to be clear, that's just like keep going straight, still straight. It's a tube. So yep, the plane, gu- the I'm guiding direction. you through there's, there's a two. plane. I mean, I guess you can go back. You're going to want to be in the plane part of the plane. <laughs> so. Look behind you. Nobody there. Go the other way. Done with directions. <laughs> you know that Air Force One was a movie because Air Force One isn't just one big tube, right? That's why it was a movie. <laughs> so. so then we get Rutger Hauer, who we've hinted that is he's it, like a bad guy as well. But now we have to make that explicit. He comes out and he gives Eric a quick smooch as if to say, I'm on the, on the plan as well. And I wouldn't take this part unless they let me kiss a pretty girl that's my granddaughter's age. God, that's fucking rough for this actress. Yeah. You can see her be like, okay, come on. Oh, laser beams off the ships of Titan. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> you can do it. You can do it. It's 2001. <laughs> Me Too hasn't happened yet. Things really suck for women. You can kiss Rick yeah. Hart. Oh, that wasn't worth it. Oh. <laughs> oh, not worth it for a made for TV movie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, but now fake Craven goes to fetch real Craven, but real Craven is ready for him. His plan was punch him real hard in the head. (laughs) (laughs) That's the whole plan. I just, I love when he comes in and finds him. He goes, not so powerful now, are you? (laughs) Were were the Satanists under the impression that people in goth bands were powerful? (laughs) (laughs) I can't tell you a room I feel safer in than a room full of goths, right? Yeah, right. If there's a room to have a panic attack in and be taken care of, it's a room <laughs> right, full of goth yes. kids. <laughs> have you met goth kids? They want to watch Nightmare Before Christmas and be left alone. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so he gives him his little evil bad guy monologue and he goes to get him and then Craven punches him. Keep in mind, there's a goddamn box cutter in this room. But no, but he punches him instead and then they get into a fight. While they're in a fight, fake Craven's gun gets knocked into a gun-sized <laughs> crack. Okay. I laughed so hard at this. So hard. <laughs> I laughed gun- for a while. <laughs> the gun slides into a gun-shaped cartoon hole somewhere. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then and then he he like paws at like a dog who can't yes. get the toy <laughs> under the thing. 
pause at it for a while. And however, the best. However long you're thinking this actor spends trying to get this gun, it's three times longer than however long you're a man. He might as I thought we were going to watch him get like a coat hanger and stretch it out. And, <laughs> Put some gum oh, on no, it. No, <laughs> it's just spinning it in a circle. I need a, I need leverage if I could get. Okay, I'm going to attach this to a shoehorn and then I'm going to lever it over. The, oh, <laughs> it's, it's gone. It's longer than Peekaboo waits for the laser to come back out. Uh, yeah, it's it was amazing. So. That said, how amazing would it be if at the end of this movie in a Day's Ex Machina, that gun in the air ducts just went off and killed one of the bad guys? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, yeah, so we cut to the cockpit. Rutger Hauer is putting in his tunes. Need a little act three opera music, I guess. I, look, I don't know anything about the making of Turbulence 3, but I can promise you this. Everything going on right now was Rutger Hauer's idea. And everyone was just like, I'm not saying no to Rutger. I feel like he's going to get. He smells like nail polish remover like really strongly. And I feel like we could just let him put on some opera and maybe he'll do a good monologue like well, you he know, did you in never Blade know Runner. sometimes you know he, he only wrote great. the bad part of that oh. monologue it, you know, it's hot. <laughs> just let him just let him do it so okay so but Rutger Hauer puts the plane into a full dive we cut back to all the passengers in the back you know they're freaking out the flight attendant is telling them to put their heads between their knees she's like this is my time to shine damn it <laughs> <laughs> they're like craving Craven. <laughs> I, I really wanted her to be like, oh, I bet y'all really wish you'd been paying attention during this safety announcement now. Who do I put the mask on first? The child or myself? Now you'll never know. So, all right. Meanwhile, Craven is, is, is working his way through the plane and he runs into Erica at the stage, right? At the rock stage that he was at before. Although the crowd has been locked away behind that, right? So he doesn't see any of that. Mm -hmm. So it's time for him and Erica to have a big old fight. Yeah, which isn't the climax this movie thinks it is because it's like the people who made this movie are like, I don't know, a goth guy and a blonde lady. That feels like an even fight to me, doesn't it? <laughs> they might as well be pulling at each other's hair for fight choreography. Right, yeah. Well, and there's this, like, at some point during the fight, the microphone cord gets severed, and it's just spitting sparks like a fucking line that was down by a tornado or some shit. Okay, there was, like, a high-tension wire going to, like, it. you know Jaws yes. 2, Jaws <laughs> lights up? It's like that. Was powering this one microphone, yes, and then it gets On severed, and it like wriggles around like a worm that got cut in half, and it's like <laughs> shocking people. Yeah, it takes three firefighters to wrestle it down or whatever. So, yeah, but while they're fighting, he trips her. She falls into that electric chair prop, and then he uses that live wire to electrocute her to death. Huh? Okay, so it was a real electric chair, not a prop. <laughs> so somebody had to buy a real. Can you buy an electric chair? Just because you want one? Or she fell ironically, like it's not an electric chair, but because the wire was there, it worked like an I electric just, chair. <laughs> and then, and I have to point this out because it's just bizarre. And then he punches her in the face. He does. Yeah. She's dead. And he's like, and we're just like, whoa, my guy, that feels weird. <laughs> yeah. Well, so but what he does actually is because it's because he's he really has to do this to this actress. He just kind of pushes her face all mean like, but like obviously knowing that he can't actually punch the poor lady. <laughs> and then we so we cut back to the audience at this point, and the the cameraman guy is holding the girl that I thought was going to be a major character and never was, and reassuring her that it's just a storm. It's just a storm. But no, it's not. No, it's it's a hijacking by insane religious terrorists. The plane, the plane. is in a nosedive. <laughs> <laughs> and even worse, if you land safely, you'll still be in Kansas. Yeah, it is exactly. Right. Yeah. So. All right. And, oh, and we cut back to Craven. This is where he comes across the corpse of his like lead guitarist and his best friend that was shot during this fight. And he has like a very solemn moment standing over his corpse and closes his eyes. And then he turns to the camera and he says, let's do the hustle. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, now I will say this was his like 
rah rah charge to the band at the beginning of the movie. Mm-hmm. I did not expect them to go for a somber, battle ready version <laughs> of it for later in the movie. Let's do the hustle. All right, that's what we're using in the show from now on. As we go out yes. to the live shows. That's Whenever exactly. we go out into the stage, l- let's do the hustle. Fuck yeah. Also, my nickname for sex from now on. <laughs> Going to be very confusing in the dressing room. Yep. <laughs> so then we cut to the cockpit where Rutger Hauer is still enjoying his, his opera. Craven bursts in and then, and then realizes he doesn't know how to fly a plane. So like threatening to shoot this guy is not a great like tactic at this point. Yeah. Especially considering that then Rutger Hauer then pulls out his own gun. We're now at three guns, yes, by the way, if anyone's three. keeping count. <laughs> three guns. Pulls out his own gun and shoots himself? Yes. Yeah. Right. Now you can't make me land the plane. He shoots himself to guarantee that he he wouldn't get talked into landing <laughs> safely by the good guys. <laughs> So, yeah, and now, okay, keep in mind that this plane is in a nosedive, right? So, like, I've, he doesn't know how to fly a fucking plane, but I feel like I could figure out, well, first we level it off. Yes. Right? Okay, well, Noah, do you have um, an Atari joystick? <laughs> <laughs> Let's be clear. He begins the process of trying to fly this plane without once going back to the cabin full of people where there are two stewardesses, by the way, to say... Does anyone know how to fly a plane? He's like, well, I'm in the room and Rutger Howard just shot himself maybe in real life. So, yep, I guess I've got to fly the plane. Yeah, well, not for a long fucking time, though, right? Because we cut back to Nick and Kate in the in the hacker den or whatever. And she's like, who's going to fly the plane? And I'm like, the question is, who's going to level off the fucking plane? And then we'll deal with who's going to land the fucking thing. But just then, Nick pulls out his goddamn joystick and he's like, I'm going to land the plane. And we're like, fucking what? I love it, but what? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. He's like, all right, no, no, no. Hear me out. I, I, I do have this Atari joystick. It's a pretty sweet one. I put some mods on it. <laughs> and then FBI lady, Kate, she calls her boss and she's like, hey, boss, uh, the hacker criminal says he has an Atari joystick. So that's the new plan. Okay, bye. And the boss is like, you can't land a plane with an Atari joystick. And she's like, yeah, I, I mean, like plot wise, you wouldn't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Could the FBI not get like a real pilot to give advice on how to land a plane? Oh, what's so amazing is that we get one of those. Yeah. They he remember shows it up later late in the movie. To the movie. Yeah. Yeah. He shows up late to the movie, like four minutes before the movie end. The only African-American speaking character in the entire film shows up and he's like, hi, I'm the pilot here. to." T- oh, you've already done it. What? Oh, you got it. You had an Atari How joystick. How can I be late oh. for the movie? Well, in that case, yeah. How am I late for a movie that you're writing? Just stop <laughs> writing. So, yeah, but we haven't met him yet. That's Fletcher. We're going to meet him in a minute. But right now, Nick gets on the horn with Craven, and he's like, "Yeah, man, you're going to have to level off the plane." And he's like, "Curiously, I did not figure that out on my own." So we have this whole like, you know, he's got to level the plane, but can he pull it back hard enough? Okay, yeah. So step one, what I want you to do, I'm an expert on this from uh, my Atari uh, work. I want you to aim away from the ground. Are you going towards it right now? <laughs> aim further away from it. I am, yes. Oh, okay. that's why you're the super genius character, I guess. Right, but it it becomes a test of strength. I feel like airplanes have power steering. No. Thank you, Heath, Heath, you took the words right out of my mouth. Because because I will say, I've seen this trope in a lot of movies now, and I feel like if it is the case that you need to be a certain amount of strong to pull a plane out of a dive, we should undo whatever that mechanism is. Yeah, right. Exactly. Get a lever in there or a pulley or some kind of mechanical <laughs> yeah. advantage. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. So, and then, then we cut to the ground where they're mobilizing emergency vehicles. I, I have no fucking idea where they would be mobilizing them to. I guess they read ahead in the script or something. We got Nick and Kate just hacking as hard as they can. I don't even know what the fuck they're going for, right? Where he's like, you know, but you need to hack into the snarfle farf. And she's like, but that would be immoral to hack into the snarfle farf. Okay, I'll hack into the snarfle farf. They, they have that whole moment, right? She, okay. To be clear, here's what that moment is. She's like, oh, that would be illegal. I can't do it. And he gives her the like 
please eyes. Like yeah. you might as well say ooh woo. And she's like, oh, you know, I can't say no to you. <laughs> criminal who I just met. <laughs> We're love interests. Yep. What a somehow, weird thing for this movie to choose to do. Somehow we are. Yeah. Uh-huh. And so, but he gets on the horn with Marilyn Manson or whatever. And he says, all right, so all you're going to have to do is just punch in the coordinates and the autopilot will land the plane for you. I'm pretty sure that's not right. I don't know no, a lot no, about landing planes, but I'm look, pretty sure that's incorrect. Look, we take a lot of the piss out of pilots on this program. We Gam has been accused in the past of being anti-pilot, but even we know that you can't just punch in where you're going and the plane lands itself. <laughs> so, I feel like you can. I feel like that's what it is now. All right. Okay. Well, we'll one third out. of us is we'll still strongly anti-pilot. Yes. Okay. But <laughs> if, if that is a thing, which it is according to the movie, why not just start with that? Right. right. I feel like you, the, that's the, fir- the first first instruction. Right, because the autopilot would just be like, oh, you know, straight down isn't right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I feel like that's the first line of code for the autopilot is like <laughs> aim away from ground if facing ground. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. But then, just then, fake Craven turns out not to be dead because keep in mind, he only ever got punched once. Right. Hey. How's it going? Um, we need like uh, seven more minutes in the movie. You want to <laughs> you want to have what, what can really only be described as a shovey goth fight. Oh, <laughs> I love the second Craven on Craven fight so goddamn much. It's so stupid and silly. At one point, fake Craven just grabs a like 12 inch bread knife that the plane keeps laying around. <laughs> it's the airplane bread knife. Everyone knows about the <laughs> airplane bread knife. But don't worry because real Craven sprays him with the steam firing fire extinguisher. You know, it doesn't shoot that messy foam or anything. Right, it shoots, yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> wind. That's why you don't bring a bread knife to a fire extinguisher steam fight. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this was fun though. So, you know, you're just like you're a, you see street performers. Do you ever see uh, gimp mimes fighting each other like two of them? <laughs> and it's awesome. Fighting over the same corner. Yeah, it was a lot like that. And then and it ends the same way, except instead of using a porta potty, they use the, the airplane bathroom at the end of the fight. Real Craven wins and he just pushes fake Craven into the airplane bathroom, realizes that's not really a thing. And so he pushes a cart in front of the door. <laughs> this would slow down this man's escape by like fractions of a second. But he's mm-hmm. like, all right, did it. <laughs> he just lines up an apple cart. To, okay, when he <laughs> opens it up, this will probably <laughs> block him for he'll for trip over it. It probably. may probably explode. I really wanted him to open it from the inside, which is how bathroom doors open. And just be like, this is nothing. I'm just moving <laughs> that's a pocket door. <laughs> Sorry, I'm really good at knocking bad guys out. I'm really bad at confining <laughs> them to spaces afterwards. Afterwards, John McCain made it look so easy, right? Because, like, keep in mind the space that he was in is the spot where real Craven was locked up earlier, right? So it's a lockable space. <laughs> so okay, so Craven comes running back into the cockpit, and then with eleven minutes to go in the movie, counting the credits, we meet the pilot character that's there to talk Craven down. Hello, everybody. And and again, this is how stupid this movie is. At this point, we have 78 people talking in a four-person chain about how to land this plane. And there are two stewardesses on board who they haven't even bothered to ask. Yeah, right, right. Or warn that they're about to land, right? (laughs) So, and, and then you also have to keep that in mind, right? Because we've not established that this plane was supposed to go to Toronto. They're in Kansas. We haven't established that it's almost out of gas or anything, right? So the thing to do would be to climb back to some tens of thousands of feet or whatever and and take a little while to figure this shit out. They can get Fletcher there and then have an hour or so, right? Nope. No, the the movie's only got 11 minutes left, damn it. It's nosedive into perfect landing or nothing. (laughs) Clearly, yeah, exactly. So we get and then Fletcher realizes that the relationship between Nick and Craven is now so well established that him and all his expertise would actually just get in the way of Nick and his Atari joystick and their power to see through Craven's feelings. 
Okay, so that's, that's real. That's how they, yeah, that's 100% how they wrote real. the expert pilot out of the plot <laughs> yes. to make yes. them have this d- dramatic thing happen at the end. He's like, yeah, I, I am a pilot, but these two have a beautiful sexual connection. So, yes. far, so <laughs> yes. I, I have to step away. We're not exaggerating. The pilot is like, no, no, no. Those two are best friends, and I can tell. I'll let them take it from here. And then he exits the movie never to re-enter it again. <laughs> yes. And then we have to have Nick giving him an advice, but all the advice is so stupid, right? Because he's like, hey, man, it has to be lined up with the runway. The airplane does. And he's like, right? Didn't think of that on my own. I'm glad you're here to tell me that There's kind The of wheels thing. down on the bottom side. They never know? even get to that. They never even get to lower the landing gear. It's all just like, all right, so you're aiming for the runway. And he's like, ooh, the runway, you say. Runway, got it. Okay. <laughs> I was hoping for a big swimming pool. There's a button right here that says autopilot land. Should I just press that probably? Or No, no. Okay. Well, yeah. So eventually he does. After like 13 steps, he's like, and now press the auto land button. But damn it, the auto land button isn't working. He's going to have to land the plane on his own. He might as well be fumbling with keys to put into a different <laughs> key thing for no reason. <laughs> he drops them. They slide through a key shaped hole. Yeah, and right, he's right. pawing at it for 10 minutes. <laughs> Land on the trigger. The gun get fired out of the gun somehow <laughs> out of the plane. Oh. Now, and, and up to this point, listener, I can imagine you might think that we've just decided to do a secular movie this week instead of a Christian movie. But no. Mm mm. The latest a movie has ever established itself as a definitively Christian movie at one hour and 24 minutes is Turbulence 3. Because at this point, Craven takes off his Satan necklace from earlier and asks for God's help to land this plane. (laughs) Yes. Which implies that according to the worldview of this movie, God was sitting there with his arms crossed being like, I didn't hear a please. <laughs> Trust me, this movie comes out in September of 2001. I'm ignoring a lot of plane crashes this year. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, so the, yeah, so we get some more like, you know, landing words, piloty words. He goes at one point, he's like, Nick is like, hey, Craven, you have to keep the crosshairs into a perfect cross. And I'm like, oh, and only a Christian could do that. But luckily. (laughs) But then the hackery guy is like, you're still too low. And I wrote in my notes to land. (laughs) (laughs) Are you subterranean now? (laughs) So, And then, okay, but just just as the plane reaches the ground, the feed cuts out and Nick assumes that they've all died. And I wrote in my notes, I got to admit, if it turns out that the plane crashed and they're all dead, I kind of love this movie. <laughs> Honestly, if the credits had rolled at that point, I think this is my favorite movie. It was just like, fuck, okay, what I normally do here is reset the Atari and try again. Uh, <laughs> can you go blow on Wes Craven? <laughs> but then it's, Wes Craven's a different guy, by the way, just in case you're curious. Craven... Slade, Slade Craven. Yeah. Slade Craven, sorry. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah, but they get him back. They get him back on the radio, and he's like, all right, I'm on the ground. How do I hit the brakes? And they talk. He's like, yeah, probably should have mentioned that beforehand. <laughs> but they talk him through that. Question. If this is happening in real life, do they have, like, big nets or, like, foamy catching stuff? They can put down. Oh, like the like the things that they like where 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 like BMX bikers practice over those little foam pits. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, that. yeah. Or like yeah, yeah. firefighters holding a big trampoline. Oh, there you mm-hmm. go. Yeah, that's actually yeah. what I, I was picturing a trampoline, and then I was like, that would just you know start another problem. That bounces you right, right back yeah, up, no, starts the problem whole, all over whole again. New <laughs> issue. Yeah. So no, <laughs> no, I don't think so. So they finally do like they 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 land the plane, they get it stopped. We get a scene where everybody hugs everybody, right? Because all all the love interests hug, and then we even get this stupid two thousand one ass scene where Joe Montana, everybody hugs, and then Joe Montana looks over at his partner, but his partner's a man, and hugging him would be gay, so they don't. That's like a that's a, a fucking comedy beat. It's so weird. They're also at this point. Is this also when the TV guy tries to shake their hands and they say no? Yeah. Yeah, Benny, the TV guy, who's been nothing but nice and helpful this entire time to them, goes to shake their hands and they just both look at it like, 
fuck you and walk out. <laughs> for no, this must have been cut from the script, right? There must have been some kind of subplot because it truly seems that, like we don't touch TV people. You all yes, have homosexuality. Right. <laughs> and then, and this is one of my favorite moments of the whole movie. Craven is like, wait, how do I talk to the plane? And he's like, oh, you push the button. And he's like, all right, everybody, we landed safe. Who wants a concert anyway? Yes, right. He's like, we're going to get this back on the road and give you the concert you paid for. I'm like, your bassist is dead in the airplane. <laughs> there are multiple corpses. Everyone there's going to need years of therapy. There are multiple bullet holes in the <laughs> fuselage. This is not a show must go on type moment, dude. I'm just picturing every the rescue crew's coming on and he's just still sitting in the pilot's chair. Oh no, I'm gonna fly it back up when we're <laughs> we Well when we go because we gotta go to Toronto. I promised everyone a concert. You're kind of fucking up my final concert. What am I, lady? Taylor Swift working with Ticketmaster? No, come on. <laughs> I take the love of my listeners seriously. <laughs> so I'm sorry. I know Taylor Swift is a big fan, and I'm sorry to yeah, flash yeah, out no, her sorry. like this. Don't, don't mean to impugn you, Taylor. Tay -tay. So, okay. So, Joe Montaigne calls Kate and tells her that she's not in trouble for arresting a guy he told her not to arrest without a warrant or any damn thing. And Nick, the, the hacker, is all right with him now. So, Nick is like, so what next? You know, you got you want to eat that pizza that you brought? or uh, And she's like, no, I want to finish arresting you. I'm going to handcuff you now. Yeah, and he's like, oh, man, you're still arresting me? But no. No. Nope. She's taking her clothes off, and she says, quote, I thought you were hungry. So to be clear, this movie, written in 2001, suggests a ending of handcuffed ass eating. Right, yes. So, but okay, so I get, look, I, I get that you can use handcuffs to do kinky sex stuff, but not with both hands behind your back beforehand, right? That's not how... Well... well he can't even take off that silly-ass Hawaiian shirt he's wearing. I think he's position. just going to be eating ass. I think he's well, just... That's true. I think yeah, the I guess he can do that fully just, dressed, so... Yeah. Okay, but regardless, <laughs> you know, can we just, like, have some pizza first, and then... Yeah. <laughs> It's right there. This is why you got to establish ground rules with Heath because he definitely hops into that room with a slice of pizza between his teeth being like, oh, I want to eat your ass, but I'm hungry. I was hungry two hours ago. You interrupted. You can have I can't one. really get the whole slice, but I can eat the cheese and the pepperoni off of it. It turns Look at out me. Even you can have one piece. One. I'll escape these handcuffs and strangle you. <laughs> All right, so then we, we wrap up. We've got a quick deboarding scene because the cameraman guy turns to turns out not main character girl, and he says, hey, you wanted to be a broadcast journalist? I'm putting you on the air right now. We're going live. And she's like, well, I couldn't. Yes, I can. Okay. And and so then she does her broadcast about telling the, the people at Z-Web live stream how everything worked out. She says, as, as a matter of fact, Slade Craven landed the plane after single-handedly fighting off all the hijackers. No idea how I would know that. I was locked in the back the whole time. <laughs> no witnesses except for Maybe Slade. Maybe the movie they were showing on the plane was Turbulence 3 Heavy Metal. <laughs> she read ahead in the script. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. And then Slade comes out and everybody cheers for him. And, and he screams us out of the movie. And one guy's like, we're best friends. And that's the end of it. Yes. <laughs> it's a really <laughs> sad, like Cecil walking out and Eli being like, we're best friends. <laughs> <laughs> so, and that's it. That's the whole movie. Yes, totally a Christian flick. And while that does it for our review of Turbulence 3, that is not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to reload this gun. So Eli, tell us what's on deck. Well, Noah, we've had a lot of fun today and that deserves punishment. So we'll be watching the anti-COVID documentary that's sweeping the internet, or at least the parts that Marsh inhabits, died suddenly. Oh, God damn it. All right, fine. I feel fine. like everything Heath? should be anti-COVID, right? That sounds reasonable. <laughs> you would hope. Heath, you have to survive the week so next week's episode isn't too ironic. Yeah, right. Died suddenly. Yeah, no, that would be, yeah. that would be very rude of you. 
So with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 381 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to get yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help us a ton by leaving a five-star review, sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, of course, you should check out our sibling shows, The Scathing A, The Citation A, D&D Minus, and The Skeptic Crowd, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robinson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotty of the Drafts on Mars. All the other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a check of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, common illusions promise to work harder on another check next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club clothes. Baby Shark is more than 1,000 times more powerful than Satan based on <laughs> use. Slade Craven went on to still socket music. Those hackers fucked the shit out of each other. The shit out of each other. Well, with all the ass eating, maybe some of that was right? literal. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, can I just, I, I want to be the first to say that, um, you know, I, I, I hope you get over your COVID quickly and everything, Heath, but your COVID voice is sexy as fuck. It's pretty sexy. I just, nice. It's actually, it's sexy and it's upsetting because I also have a gravelly voice right now, but it's not sexy. <laughs> it's like I got the not sexy version of COVID voice. Clearly. Yeah. But I don't have COVID. All right. And this is interstitial two. It's silty. Mm -hmm. Would it be silty? Silty. Ooh. Yeah. Yep. There you go. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2022. All rights reserved.